Behold, my new champion. The 68060 Blizzard Power PC Accelerator card by Phase 5. Hello and welcome to AmiPal, the number one place on the internet for the sweetest Amiga content. Today, as you may have guessed from that intro, um, we're talking about a new accelerator card. I say new, uh, it came out exactly at the same time as the 68040 accelerator that I currently have in my tower. Um, but uh, at the time I couldn't afford a 68060 accelerator, they were very expensive. And, well, it hasn't really changed, they still are. Um, I've been wanting a 68060 for many years and I was fortunate enough this February to be able to get my hands on not only a 68060 Accelerate card but one of the Blizzard PowerPC 68060, 68060 Accelerator card. I think that's right. Um, now there are a lot of other options out there um, coming out relatively soon for the Amiga 1200 and some of the other Amigas for 68060 accelerators. Um, they offer faster 68K um, clock speed, so you can get them up to 66 megahertz, 75, even 100 for the new um, Warp um, 060 boards. Um, I'm not really interested in those because I do have quite a bit of PowerPC software that I enjoy using. Um, therefore, I I wanted the Blizzard PowerPC board specifically. Um, so uh, I guess we best crack on, hadn't we? Let's take a look at the difference between the two boards. Now let's just give these two a once over and see what differences we can see uh, before we plug in the 060 board. Um, one thing you'll notice is that there's quite a large garish uh, heatsink on the 040. I fitted that years ago, knowing that the 68040 gets very hot. The, uh, the 060 doesn't quite get as hot, so I'm going to leave one off there for now and uh, just rely on the case cooling to try and keep it cool. Um, you can also see I've already populated the board with memory. Um, so that's two uh, 128 meg sims on that board, um, making 256 meg in total. Um, another thing you'll notice uh, down here is a header with pins on it and a chip over here. Um, that is the SCSI interface, um, well the SCSI controller should I say. It doesn't exist on my 040 board um, because we didn't need it. Um, whether or not I'll use that is another matter entirely because obviously I've got the fast ATA um, but it might be interesting to um, play around with that and see whether or not we can maybe get like a SCSI to IDE adapter on there and see whether or not we get a better system as a benefit. Right, let's get this magnificent new accelerator plugged in. So there it is, all plugged into the power tower. Um, it was actually quite a tight fit, um, but uh, these things do tend to be. Um, I actually, I, I wiggled it out slightly from the slot because um, quite often, because it's actually quite a tight connection, um, people may find that their accelerators don't quite function. So just moving it out ever so slightly can uh, get it to work again. Um, look in the top. Where is it? There it is. Uh, so yeah, there it is in the tower. One thing I will say is that the... Uh, Oh, I don't know if we can see it here. These scuzzy pins right on the end of the board, um, they are incredibly close to the edge and um, just wiggling it into this tower was tricky enough. Um, I have previously tried getting it into a desktop case and uh, it's a very tight fit indeed, so um, definitely prefer this to be in a tower rather than a desktop case, I think. Right, now it's in. Let's get the lid back on and get this thing powered up. Gloria Sysinfo. So we can see we've got 68040 here uh, with an FPU and an MMU. 
um, AJ Alice. And we'll do a little test on speed. And there we go, we're a one to one match to an A4000. Uh, it's 3.99 times faster than the 68030 25 MHz A3000. Um, it's 15 times faster than a standard A1200. And it's a glorious 34.97 times faster than an Amiga 600. So 19.31 MIPS, uh, 4.76 Megaflops, 18.503 Dry Stones. Um, it's just some memory information there. Uh, do some drive speed. So let's do DH0, which is a PFS partition. There we go, five, 5 million bytes a second. Let's try a solid state SD card that's formatted as FFS. Expect that to be faster actually. Try one of the other drives. Ah, but then we do have it on a light, lower PIO level, so that could explain that one. Um, let's try another, yeah, see, DH2 there, get 6 million, 6.5 million bytes a second, so uh, pretty good. Right, now we've got the 68060 um, plugged into the 1200, uh, you can see via sysinfo, here we go, 68060 FPU, yes, MMU, yes, it's all in there. Um, all the caches are wrong. Um, let's do a speed test. Bam! There you go. So we were looking at just a one to one ratio versus the 6040 in the A4000. Uh, it's more than twice that speed, 2.05 times faster than the A4000. Um, so faster than anything Commodore ever produced. Um, I will say now though that there was a quick pack um, A4000 uh, released during the uh, SCOM era that had no 6 in it. So probably something around there. <laughs> um, so eight times faster than the 25MHz A30 in the A3000. 30 times faster than standard Amiga 1200. And um, 70 times faster than a an A600, that's that's pretty amazing isn't it? Um, wow, okay, so let's have a look at some drive speeds then and see if that's made any difference. DH0 first, not DOS disk but we said that was because it's PFS. That's a slight improvement, 5.7 million bytes a second. Um, I think DH2 had, this one's only got 150 buffers, DH2 has 600. Um, it's also PFS, so I don't know why Sysinfo is declaring it as an FFS. It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> Gives me the lowest speed when I first click it, but uh, 6.5 million when I re-click it. Let's go for the solid state one, for the, uh, the SD card. Yeah, it's about the same. So. Drives are slightly faster, but uh, we're seeing massive improvement in integer and floating point calculations. Wow. Okay, let's have a look at some games. Let's do some tests. Okay, first up is Nomad 4. This benefits immensely. Um, it's a much more reactive game. Uh, you don't feel like you're just trying to keep ahead of the game. Uh, and you can instantly see it, it's just smoother. Now Breath of the East didn't benefit as much as I thought it would, uh, so I'm wondering whether or not I've got the correct uh, 060 version installed or set up correctly. But either way, it does run much better. Uh, I haven't gone full screen here, but it's pretty much the same. It runs slightly better. Um, but yeah, it's a good game. Hello. Now in the postage stamp it's pretty much the same, um, 
but when we pump it up to full screen, you instantly see a difference. It just it moves. Um, it's an infinitely more playable game in full screen. Uh, you can see the chunks just going everywhere. Because um, obviously that's why you play it. Much better game overall. Now Alien Breathe 3D is the killing grounds. It, uh, it takes quite a bit out of the Amiga and you can straight away see the 060 is a huge improvement. Uh, we're still not getting massive uh, frames per second values on the 060. Um, I think 10 is the maximum I saw, um, but at least it's not the slideshow that the 040 version is. Okay, to the original AB3D. This um, there's not much in it really. Um, it's a two x two engine already. Uh, it's already quite a small size. Um, maybe it runs ever so slightly faster on the A60, but I, I didn't really feel like I I was playing it any better because of it. Um, just I, th I think an O4O and O3O run quite similar for AB3D. Uh, 060 doesn't do much above that. Now, genetic species, this is another thing entirely. This on the 060 is just smooth as butter. Um, getting in the region of 16 frames a second, maybe higher. You can kind of see the number in the top left corner there. Uh, it just, it's beautiful, beautiful game. Something else other than a first person shooter, this is Napalm, uh, the Amiga's version of, or answer to, Barn Conquer. Um, yeah, units move a bit nicer, they react quicker, the scrolling's smoother. You have Shadow of the Third Moon, you can see the, the difference in this instantly, it's just smooth, smooth, smooth. I think I saw 25 frames a second on this Vauxhall engine on the 060, um, and you, you get about 10 on, on the 040, so it, it plays a lot nicer. Right, now for some application benchmarking. Uh, first up we have a Photoshop-esque artifacts. So opening this image, around 9 seconds on the 040, and a third of that on the 060. This funky zoom blur, 3.5 minutes versus 1. And the Gaussian blur, 1 minute 42 versus around 30 seconds on the 060. And finally a bit of sharpening, which is 48 seconds on one and 47, almost 48 on the other. So not much difference on that. Let's go for some proper FPU performance uh, with Simar 4D, ray tracing, this beautiful blast staircase scene. Almost an hour on the 040 and less than half an hour on the 060. And then the Earth Moon scene, 35 minutes versus 15. I'll take that. But how does Doom run now? Well, let me show you. I actually put a comparison against it because uh, it's night and day, but um, here's Doom, the Doom Attack engine uh, on the we saw um, <laughs> yeah there's a big improvement I mean the uh, 6040 was the most powerful CPU available for the Amiga 4000 and um, that was the most powerful one you could buy for your Amiga at the time um, the A1200 only comes with a 68820 14 megahertz one as standard um, and now we've got a 6060 at 50 megahertz um, it's it's twice the speed of the 6040 um, and uh, I mean you could see from the game demos that played um, and from the application uh, metrics from the comparisons for opening files for um, doing convolutions in Artifact for rendering um, ray tracing images it, it just it makes a huge difference uh, system wise um, 
things open that that bit faster. I think the limitation there really is the um, the ID interface um, being what it is, um, and just just the fact that there's no DMA on that. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I, I've noticed a huge difference from upgrading from the 040 to the 060. Um, I know that it's expensive. Um, I'm not even going to tell you what I paid for that board, but <laughs> it's uh, it's a hobby we love, isn't it? So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you all understand. Um, as I said earlier on, um, there are other 060 boards you can get just plain 060 with no power PC on. This this is the only one that comes with a power PC. Um, so all the others are just 68K um, CPU on there, and you know you, Apollo boards, Blizzard boards. Um, I think there's a terrible fire 060 coming out. There's the aforementioned warp 060 board as well that's in the hands of t testers at the moment. Um, that I believe comes unpopulated, so you need to source your own 68k chip for it. Um, and the only issue with that is that it's very difficult to get the full 68060 chip. Um, I think that there are EC and LC versions that it, I can't remember which way around it is, but some lack an FPU, others lack an MMU. Um, and if people are coding for 68060 chips, then they expect the full instruction set. So um, just make sure if you're going to spend the, the DOSH on one of those CPUs, I think they go for like 250 quid or something just for the chip, um, then make sure it is the full version. Um, because there there are people who basically they they re stencil the the uh, lettering on the the ceramic top. Anyway, <laughs> on that footnote, thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you've got any questions about this, please ask in the usual place below, um, and I'll, I'll try and answer as best I can. Um, if you've got any hints or tips about the setup of the system, um, if you think that some of the games like Doom should play faster or I should play them better maybe, um, then also please add a comment and uh, I'll endeavour to respond. Cheers! <laughs>